but welcome everyone, and we're going to start with Rachel Chambers. Hi everyone. Thank you very much for coming this evening on this beautiful night. Um, so when I thought about what I was going to say, I had no idea. I had no idea. And then I got really nervous that I didn't know what to talk about. And then I thought, you talk for a living. I'm a teacher. I just finished up my 17th year of teaching um, online, and I, I learned I really like it. Um, I am going to go back to teaching in person, but just that time to reflect and also have that time, like right after a class is over, I didn't have to clean up and I have to go right outside to my garden, which is just, I feel like teaching and gardening is so similar because you are taking care of something and trying to make it better for the future, if that makes sense. You're contributing. So, when I really thought about this body of work, when I was finished, I took a look at all of it and said, okay, why did I do all this? Other than I really love mixing colors, I really love mixing um, textures, and I thought, because it's just what you do, like you just get up and you paint and it's an automatic thing like a robot, and that's why it's robot gardening. And I also like to think about how plants keep changing over time and how Robots keep changing over time, and how everything keeps changing over time. And the reason why I do this is because it's work. And I realized I really love working. My whole family loves working. Um, and I'm from a long line of farmers and teachers. So my great-great-grandfather was Francis Ron Shunk. And if you know Shunk Street in South Philly, that's my great-great-grandfather, which I think is really awesome. Um, and he started as a farmer, and when he turned 16 years old, he was a teacher. And then my mom's a teacher, my brother's a teacher, my great aunt was a teacher, and my dad was a landscaper, and he taught me a lot about working with my hands. So when I started all of this, this was the first piece that I started with because I just, I love pansies. They just, uh, the word is not like a like hearty word. No one goes, I'm gonna go buy some pansies. Like no one's really like, into that. But this plant takes over and it's gorgeous and it's bright. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna start with the pansies because those were the first plants that I bought this summer. And then over time, my style changed. I evolved, just like plants do, just like teaching does humans do. And it went from something that's really, really controlled, and then I felt that I just needed to kind of let go over time. And I think, I can't remember what my last, I think the lupins were the last that I painted. And I really started to abstract some things. And every day I would go out into my own garden space and just study something that I had just put in the ground that had just started to come to life on its own. Because another thing that I like to do in West Philadelphia is walk around and see what people have put out on the streets for free. And a lot of the times, people have tried with their plants and they'll say, needs TLC, please take. And I have, over half my plants are rescues. And, I'll, and then I learn from the plant what it needs if it needs to be trimmed back, if it needs nothing at all, because sometimes you, just like with teaching and gardening, you can overlove something. And then it stunts it. The addition of the basketry is just for some texture to come off the wall, because I wanted this space to feel more like, it's an installation, it's more salon style, and when you are gardening, you are moving things around. You want color to play. You want height to play. You want to see what's going to be taking um, center stage at a certain time in the season, what's going to die back, what needs more shade. Um, I'm not quite sure what else I want to say about this. All the, all the colors are hand mixed. And 
over the winter, I was working in some really soft colors, just kind of trying to find a, a new voice um, in my imagery, because I had just moved from Boston, um, where I owned a 200-year-old farmhouse on an acre, and I had a huge garden there, and I sold, sold the house, sold the acre, I had a weaving loom, sold that, sold my studio, and had to just kind of figure it out all over again. And now I feel like I'm really, like I'm, I found it, so the colors got brighter. But I'd like to open it up for any questions. <coughs> With the beautiful organic plant life, and then you have the, the uh, graphic black linear drawing that's happening. Uh, Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, okay, so I'm glad that um, you talked about that a little bit. So, when it comes to uh, just design and moving your eye around, I really like to use line work. And I look at these as like rocks in your garden. Um, and how those add height or shadow, another texture, another color. Um, so with this piece, I'm just pointing at this because it's just here, it's close to me. Um, I will paint, uh, like I did the yellow first, every single piece has chrome yellow in it to keep your eye moving. And just like in a garden where you might say, okay, I need yellow spotted around everywhere, or a lot of people love pink. They put pink everywhere. Um, so I'll start with the yellow, and then um, I drew in the succulents. So I painted the background first, and then I left it, and then I'll walk away for a while, and then I come back, and I'm like, no, and I'll just have to draw right over it, because if things are too perfect, I just have to throw a rock at it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Do you have any particular ideas when you're doing the beadwork? I will work um, with the material. Okay. So, like these, these beads in particular are so small and delicate. I knew I'd have to do something really, really small and delicate. And I learn how to handle the material as I go. So, like this is actually blue glass. These were dyed pink. And then so were my fingers after a while. And I didn't know. I had no idea. So as I was working, I was like, why are my hands doing that? Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. So I know that I couldn't handle doing that the same exact way that I was doing this. I like the Medusa one up there. That's pretty cool. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah. So something like that, I will create. So I will create the base first, mm -hmm. and then as I, um, actually, nope, I fit. So I'll create all of these little, I call them spines, these little spines first, and then I'll start weaving the basket, and then every other spine, I would add one, and then bring the element that goes around and around, kind of around, add another one, <laughs> attach it. So it builds up in layers. What, what material are those baskets of, of their wool? I'm, just, I'm fascinated. Now. These two so what are they? Uh, stainless steel and copper. Oh, it's wire. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 nice, nice and thin. thin. That was good. Yeah, nice, nice and thin. And um, I don't use. I'll use tools to um, bend the ends of things, but something like those, I don't use any tools, it's just- And you have one underneath it, you just form it? I just, just oh. start. <laughs> well, thanks everyone. Thank you very much.